other thing I, I didn't mention in that beverage bit is, is the upper hall. Uh, it's not as pointy as it should be. It's a bit like a, a, a 1970s Fender Telecaster disaster when they changed the body shape and um, nobody noticed. This comparison isn't quite as scientific as it should have been. Oh, and of course, you know, one's got the one's got the early single pick guard, and one's got the back wing pick guard. I mean, I'd fight anyone that said that that made a sound difference because I'm sure it doesn't. I think there's an SG for everyone here, really, to be honest with you. That's that. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Guitaristas. Thanks for joining us today. Very good to see you again. So today, well, what we're going to do today is we're going to carry on with a with a bit of an SG um, loving. I think it's one way I could describe it. I suppose. So we started the year with um, a review of this. Wonderful Epiphone 1961 Les Paul SG, um, just last week. Thank you very much for all your comments. Um, it's a great guitar. We established that. Um, lots of questions about, because this is a price, pricey, because <laughs> this is pricey in, uh, you know, what, $900 or something like that. I paid £701 for mine. Uh, got a little bit of a discount on it, but it's quite expensive. But of course, it's got all the you know all the the Gibson pickups and some really pucker stuff. So a lot of questions on how it compares to the SG Custom that I reviewed a little while ago, and um, the SG Standard that I reviewed a little while ago. Both Epiphones inspired by Gibsons. And a lot of questions are, why would you buy this um, rather than a, a second-hand Gibson? So I thought today we'd, we'd have a look at all of those other three options and um, see if we can decide anything. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't suppose we'll decide anything, to be honest with you, but we can have a look at them anyway, and uh, at least then we've, you know, we, can, we can sort of compare them and um, see how they stack up and... Um, you can maybe, it might help you decide which one to buy or not to buy. Or it might just be a little bit of fun. Um, as long as it's something, we're all good. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to have a closer look, um, look at all the stats again and stuff. I'm not going to take them apart today. We've already done that. The well, Certainly with the three Epiphones, there's a thorough review of each of those, so we'll put the links in the description box. So if there's anything I miss in this that you want to know, you'll probably find it in the individual reviews, so check those out. Um, but what we'll do is we'll, yeah, we'll have a good, good close-up look at all of these four guitars. We'll compare the necks and the measurements. We'll compare the pickups and the outputs and the hardware and the software and whatever else we remember, really. Um, I'm sure we'll forget something, but uh, we'll do our best, okay? So, let's get stuck in. So, let's look at the guitars. So, of course, we've got the Epiphone uh, 1961 Les Paul SG. Retail price in the UK, £749, so around about $900. The Epiphone SG Custom, I paid £469 uh, in the UK, so this is... You know, probably selling for around about you know five hundred pound or maybe six hundred fifty dollars. And the Epiphone SG Standard, I paid three hundred twenty nine pound for this. I think it was a X Display. I got it a little bit cheap. So these are probably around about four hundred pounds, five hundred twenty five hundred fifty dollars, something like that. You know, we're in the ball. These are ballpark figures. You know, they'll vary. And this is a second hand Gibson SG. So I bought this a couple of years ago, maybe three years ago. I paid £500 for this. Uh, obviously, you'd be very lucky to get it for £500 now. Um, my feeling is these 
you know, around about seven or eight hundred pounds might get you a, a, a good, might get you a second hand Gibson SG. This is a 2010 standard, so it's a, you know, it's the, it's the, the pucker one, if you like. Um, this is their kind of flagship, you know, standard, SG standard from that time, 2010. So we will be interesting to see, um, you know, I don't know what the pickups are or, or anything, so it'll be interesting to have a look, wouldn't it? So very soon we're going to start hearing these guitars um, back to back. Um, with some starting off with some simple stuff um, to give you an idea of how they compare, I suppose, in with simple stuff, <laughs> and then we'll we'll try and turn up the wick a little bit and um, play them a little bit more. Okay, so um, again, you know, we tones and volumes and stuff. We've gone through all of that stuff, um, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get bogged down in all that sort of stuff today. Let's just actually hear some some stuff side by side and we'll we'll run in all the nerdy data as well the specky stuff um throughout now and um, we'll get on with it and um we'll see if we can make some headway okay <laughs> And then I'm going to chip in and mention what you're listening to, uh, just really in case you can't be bothered to watch, or it, maybe you're not able to. This is the Epi 61. This is the Epi Custom. the Epi Standard. And the Gibson. Four SGs, to all intents and purposes, the same shape. A couple of minor variations, obviously, which we'll get into a little bit more in a second. Um, so they're all made of wood, obviously. Mahogany. Um, they're all made of mahogany. Um, I would say it's a safe bet that the three Epiphones are made from the same species of mahogany, whereas the Gibson, um, slightly different, uh, purely because it's sourced on a different continent. I don't know any more than that about um, the sort of timber that they use. I'd like to find out. In fact, um, I did go to the extent of contacting an Epiphone rep in the UK. I got a number from a friend of mine of an Epiphone rep in the UK, and I fired off an email saying I'd, you know, I'd be very interested to, to share a little bit more information about the type of timber that is used in these, um, these Epiphone guitars. Um, you know, with, with you guys. But he ignored me, so I'm afraid I don't know any more than that. I will try again at some point. I, I think it would be an interesting um, subject to dig a little bit deeper into because a lot of people are very sniffy about their, their, their tone woods, as you know. Tone woods is a massive debate. But the, the, the Epiphone timber is in some way inferior to the hallowed Gibson timber. Uh, and we just simply don't know if that's true or not. So it would be interesting to find out. But anyway, um, moving on, they're all made of mahogany. They've also all got mahogany necks. Um, we know that the Epi Standard and the Epi Custom, uh, they've got scarf joints in the necks and heel joints, whereas the Gibson and the Epi 61, they are carved 
from a single piece of timber. So um, yeah, that's that. In terms of the um, the finish, we we discussed the um, the Epi sixty one just last week. Uh, I mean, imagining it's it is a kind of a urethane um, finish. Uh, I think that's what they call it. But it's it's flat. It's it's not a high gloss finish. This it's I call it a satin satin finish. The uh, the other two Epiphones solid urethane high gloss finish on those. Where of course the Gibson um, has got the nitro finish. Um, and looking at it, you can see you can see it's a lot thinner. You can see the the wood grain um, underneath it. Um, shows through and um, it's got lots of dings in it already obviously this is an older guitar anyway this is like 12 years old now so it would have um, but it's a, it's a nice you know worn in nitros guitar it's nice when they look like this after a decade it's not so nice when they look like this from brand new <laughs> when you haven't paid extra for it shall we say Okay, um, I'm just looking now at the binding as well. Um, the neck binding on all of the uh, the Epis is nice shade of antique white, classic white, if you like. Whereas the Gibson's faded to quite a it's quite a quite a yellowy colour actually. That's faded too. Yeah. Okay, the fretboards on these now. Um, this is divisive, isn't it? So the um, oh, the two white ones here. So the Epiphone Standard and the um, the Big Money Epi sixty one. They've both got Indian laurel fingerboards, whereas the uh, the Gibson. Um, we we must assume that this is rosewood, and they were definitely putting rosewood fingerboards on on Gibsons in two thousand and ten. Um, so you can compare. You know the, the the difference in these in in these in the close-up shots here, and bearing in mind that the Gibson's been played by oily fingers over quite a long time, whereas uh, both of the white Epiphones haven't been played very much. And um, I can't remember if I lemon oiled either of these, but I don't think I did. So they're they're pretty much as they came. The Epi Custom, of course, has got an ebony fingerboard. So. There you go, I wonder if we can hear the difference. Let's have a look at the profiles and specifications. So here you are, you can see those specs all on the screen. Um, they're, okay, so the Epiphones are all very similar. They're all very similar. The, uh, the 61 is slightly fatter when it gets down the, up towards the 12th fret, but there's kind of about a millimeter difference in it, I think. Um, and their Epiphone call these a, a, a medium C profile, but we, you know, they're not, they're, they're a D profile really. Um, as far as I'm concerned, they are anyway. You can see that. If you compare that to the Gibson, you can see that the Gibson's a lot chunkier. It's a lot rounder. Um, so the Gibson's got a fatter neck. That's a significant difference between the Gibson and the, the Epiphones. You would feel the difference. Uh, you'd know you were playing the Gibson from the feel of the neck. I don't think you'd be able to tell the difference um, between the Epiphones, were it not for the fact that the 61 is has got a nice satin finish, whereas the uh, the other two uh, are a little bit more glossy. Okay, so now let's um, so let's see what they weigh, shall we? Let's weigh them. Gibson SG Standard weighs six pound eight 
ounces or 2.97 kilograms. So the Epiphone SG standard weighs six pound 14 ounces or 3.12 kilos. Epiphone SG custom weighs six pounds 11 ounces or 3.06 kilograms. And the Epiphone 1961 weighs six pounds nine ounces, 2.98 kilograms. So there you go, they, they all weigh within a, a couple of ounces of each other, which is, I think it's interesting. I suppose it means that the Epiphone factory where they make the these three um, are all are very consistent in their, the, the timber that they use. And that it isn't really any different, or certainly weight wise, it's no different to the, to the stuff that they use um, in the Gibson factory or, or over 10 years ago. So there you go. Hmm. Well, yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? It's close. <laughs>
orange drop capacitors and um, a simple treble bleed on, on each of the volume controls. I'm pretty certain that's what I'm looking at there. And I also see that, that um, the bridge pickup there has got a four conductor wire on it. So uh, I'm guessing that one might have been changed um, and possibly even the neck pickup. Um, I have had the, uh, I did take the, the plate off to check these pickups before I started filming. Um, I didn't film that, uh, but the bridge pickup was clearly marked as a 490T with the Gibson stamp on the back, the Gibson in logo, you know, stamped into it. And the, the neck pickup was the same. It had that Gibson stamp, but it didn't have a label on it. So I, I assumed that it was the, the original. But there's a possibility it's been changed. Um, I don't know. I don't know. See what it sounds like, I suppose, and we can judge. But this goes to what I was saying um, when people ask, why buy the Epiphone 61 when you can buy a second-hand Gibson for the same money? Uh, and I said, well, that depends very much on what Gibson you get. Um, a lot of the wiring in Gibson SGs over the years, certainly sort of around about two, 2014, 2015, to my memory, a lot of those were the printed circuit boards, plug-in pickups, and people didn't like them. Um, a lot of people changed them. I don't think this would have come with a PCB originally, but obviously someone's you know, done something to it. It wasn't me, honest. <laughs> I'd have remembered. Um, but, uh, you know, it looks like I might have, you know, this particular one, I just bought it off the, the wall because it was cheap. It was 500 quid. It was cheap then. You know, you wouldn't get it for 500 quid now, obviously. But, yeah, it looks like I've ended up with something that's already been hopped up, you know. Um if you get a second-hand Gibson and it's got the old PCB in it and stuff, the first thing you'll want to do is trash all that. So you might end up spending a couple of hundred quid on top of your Gibson SG. You know, so that's worth thinking about. Anyway, let's put this back. There you go, and that's what the, uh, the Epiphone Custom looks like inside. You know, no surprises, but that's got the, the, the plug-in pickups, but the CTX pots. Um, nothing fancy in the way of capacitors or treble bleeds or anything in there. There's the Epiphone standard. You know, that's identical to the custom. It's identical to custom. It's got the same caps, same hand-wired, but all the same plug-in pickups. There you go. And, of course, there's the Epiphone 61, uh, fully hand-wired, and the... This has got Mallory caps, and that appears to be the only difference, really. Mallory caps and no plastic plugs. So now, <laughs> let's talk about bevels. So, yeah, a lot of feedback last week. Obviously, if you haven't seen it, um, I'll show you the, the back of this guitar here. Um, and hopefully you can, you can see it on the cameras, but... Uh, that this bevel is not, um, doesn't go all the way around. And um, so first off, they're claiming for this to be historic correct bevels, and we, we don't think it is. Um, historic correct, the, my closest um, thing that I've actually physically got here to compare this to is this, which is my 62 uh, Les Paul Jr., 1962. So, you know, it's the same year. And if you look at the back of this, I mean, obviously that bevel goes all the way around, and it's got a, it's got a a, a, a slant, a bevel, if you like, from there. A line goes across there, and it then, it's it disappears down towards the neck. I'll have to do lots of close-ups because I'm sure this won't come out. But this has also got a, a, a bevel there. This one has there's no bevel there, but there is one there. And this looks exactly the same as the 1961 Les Paul SG standards that, you know, we showed you pictures of last week. So this is vintage correct. I mean, obviously it is because it's from 1962. So um, that's vintage correct. 
And the problem with with this Epiphone 1961 is it, firstly, this this bevel doesn't doesn't carry on to the lower horn. It's got a very slight angle there. It's got that slight angle there. So I'm I'm guessing that that's what they're referring to when they say vintage correct. Um, but it's got no. It's got a kind of a. It's actually got a half-assed attempt at a bevel there. But it's really not done very well. It, it's kind of neither one thing or another, which is a shame. So yeah, I'm not, I'm not really sure what went on there. Um, but if you compare it to the others, the, the Gibson SG standard, I mean, that's... I did say in the last film that bevels have kind of always been a little bit over the place, but it's definitely got that lower horn bevel that goes all the way around there. It's got no slanting bevel from there towards the, the neck heel. This one's got bevels on both of the horns at the rear. <laughs> I think I'm making sense. The Epiphone SG standard, again, it's it's got the full lower horn bevel. Uh, it's got the correct bevel on the rear upper horn, but no slant towards the neck heel. And the Epiphone SG Custom is exactly the same as that. It's got the, all the way around on the lower horn. Uh, it's got the, the bevel on the rear of the upper horn, but no slant there. So, so that means the 61's a little bit weird, really. It's, as I say, it's neither one thing or another. Um, it's a mess, actually. I'm just looking at it there, looking at it across there. It's kind of weird. Strange. Oh, well. That's that. This is the Epi 61. <laughs> mention in that beverage bit is is the upper horn uh, it's not as pointy as it should be uh, it's not it's it's definitely not as pointy as any other SG that I own and including these other three here uh, as you can see from this shot so um, I saw someone mentioned this I think and I kind of dismissed it as being as a result of the the thicker poly finish that they put on it but um, no that's that's not the case here it's not the case here at all. Something else going on with this, I don't know, CNC program, whatever it is. It's a bit weird. It's a bit like a, a, a 1970s Fender Telecaster disaster when they changed the body shape and um, nobody noticed for quite a long time. I've noticed. <laughs> okay, so let's, let's discuss. Um, Four SGs, they all feel great, and they all sound great. So I played these a fair amount now, you know, in the process of, of making this film, and I, I picked them all up and I put them all down a lot, and uh, I suppose I got um, used to slight differences in feel. Well, I should say that I, I, I made a point of setting the pickup heights, you know, as close as I could to being identical. The action on all of these is set to my preferred, um, you know, height. 
The only thing I couldn't control on this is the nut on the Gibson's different. It's a Gibson nut. Um, it feels lower at the uh, at the first fret. Um, and I'm, I've got to say, and this is the truth, the only guitar that I had to keep on top of tuning-wise was the Gibson. It's just what happened, you know. I didn't have any problems with it as such, but I just had to tweak it on a fairly regular basis. So, you know, make of that what you will. I think it is because the nuts on Epiphones are better than the nuts on Gibsons, or again, yeah, or the ones that they used to put on Gibsons 10 years ago, which I don't think they've changed at all. So starting with the uh, the standard, I mean, bear in mind, I, I paid £320 for this. film it, it 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 hardly sounds any different to any of these others here I would say um, maybe a little bit brighter uh, 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 on some settings maybe a little bit brighter onto the custom <laughs> Throaty, uh, if that's a word I can use. Um, a little bit more aggressive. Um, I mean, the only and the only way I could explain any difference between this and the the standard is the ebony bald, because apart from that, they're identical. Oh, they're a different colour, obviously, and they've got a different you know, logo up there. But apart from that, there's, well, there's no difference between these guitars. I mean, this looks super cool compared to very cool, I suppose. Um, oh, and of course, you know, one's got the, one's got the early single pick guard and one's got the back wing pick guard. I, I mean, I'd fight anyone that said that that made a sound difference, because I'm sure it doesn't. Well, it's got extra, it's got, an, it's got half a dozen extra screws in it, so maybe that's it. Oh, and the other thing I have noticed actually is that um, they're all new sets, very new sets of strings because the last films I made, I really haven't played them since then. So, but I've top wrapped the, um, I've just noticed I've top wrapped the, uh, the standard. Well, there's a thing that might, you know, that, that might make a difference. That might make that that extra brightness because people do say it gives it a more slinky feel. Well, okay, well, this, this comparison isn't quite as scientific as it should have been because um, there is a slight difference. And it's the same with the Gibson here. That's top wrapped. Um, so, well, I'm not going to start again. It's too late now. This has happened, all right? Um, just give me a little bit of slack. Um, we'll do another film now and see if there's any difference between top wrap and um, not top wrap. To wrap or not to wrap. Um, so where was I? Throaty, bright, throaty. The 61, I, 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 would, I was 
my, my description was, was refined, more refined. You know, the pickups would account for that, I suppose. Good old Gibson burst bucket pickups in that and, you know, nicer, nicer caps. So they could make it a little bit more articulate, perhaps. I think so. Um, and then the Gibson. So... neck, rosewood board, totally different pickups, you know, 490s, and, and some nice stuff going on in there. You, you couldn't hear a massive difference. You couldn't, I, I think if you do a blind test, you wouldn't, I don't think you would hear which one was which between these. Let's do that now. Four clips. A, B, C, D, okay? You need to tell me in the comments below which guitar is which. Four clips, which guitar is which? Let's go. was just a section random section taken from um, some of the stuff that I recorded here so it'd be interesting to see if you can tell the difference between the Gibson you know I've, I've given the game away I, I thought there was more sustain but I think it depends on the settings that you know you're using at that particular time and uh, and also to bear in mind that if I'm you know I'm playing these things across an hour and picking them up and putting them down and you know, sometimes my concentration wanders. Sometimes I pick a guitar up and I'm just in. Sometimes I pick a guitar up and I'm thinking about what I'm having for dinner. Um, and there is a difference to what that sounds like. Trust me. Um, I, I, I mean, you know, I think... <laughs> I've said before I have mixed mixed results when I'm trying to do the playing bit. And uh, I'm not sure whether today's a, 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 a dinner one or not, to be honest with you, but... It's what it is, isn't it? So, you know, that's the that's the fun. You never know what's going to happen. Well, you know, that's a lot of old waffle and nonsense, really, isn't it? Because at the end of the day, really, all that matters is they're all great, and um, you know, everyone's a winner. So, what's my favourite? Well, I mean, I don't have a favourite, and there was never the intention to kind of you know rank them. Um, or say one's better than the other, uh, because I don't think one is better than the other. I think they're all fantastic. I think they're all... I think there's an SG for everyone here, really, to be honest with you. I'm, I'm, I mean, I really do like the, the Epi 61. It, it feels great, and it plays really great. Um, yeah, there's... I can't stop looking at that horn now. These two, the, the cheaper Epiphones, the standard and the custom, are, are brilliant. They're brilliant. If you haven't tried a, a modern Epiphone in, from this inspired by Gibson range, which I think was 2019 launch, if, you're, if your opinion of Epiphone guitars is based on 
things that, you know, may be as old as this one, uh, this Gibson here. Um, you know, I urge you to try it, give them another try because these are remarkable. Remarkable guitars for the money. And there's nothing you can't do on these that you could, could you know, you can do on the, the Gibson. There's nothing, there's not, you know. What is it? What's the difference? So there you go. Um, I hope that's been something. <laughs> let me know what you think. Let me know. Let me know what you think sound wise, if you could hear what I was hearing or maybe something different. Um, and um, yeah, we'll let us know in the comments below and we'll, we'll carry on the discussion. OK, guys. Um, thanks very much for um, for watching as usual. And um, join us again next week. See what's going on then. Hey, eh? all right. Cheers for now. Ta-ra. Bye.